Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, The Organisation of Living Things. In this video we're going to try and cover a lot of things, so um, it's probably a good idea to do this in a couple of goes. Uh, but we need to investigate the gas exchange structures in animals through the collection of primary and secondary data and information. For example, microscopic structures, alveoli in mammals, and macroscopic structures, respiratory systems in a range of animals. Now that in itself means we've got a lot of different things to look at, so let's get into it. So when we're talking about gas exchange surfaces, we're talking about uh, large surface area to volume. So surface area to volume is one of your default settings. You're going to say large surface area to volume if you're not sure of what else to say because it's always going to be something that's relevant in biological systems. And thin surfaces have a large surface area in comparison with their volume, and that means that they are efficient. So there's a relationship between surface area to volume and efficiency um, in terms of exchange. Now they need to be moist. And moist is about the solubility, solubility of gases. So most of the gases that we talk about are things like oxygen and carbon dioxide, two very important gases. And those two gases are soluble, only slightly soluble in water, but soluble. And that's the form in which they tend to uh, move across the gas exchange surfaces. I mentioned the large surface area, that is um, a component of the large surface area to volume that we see in the thin, but that large surface area is all about exchange. So we want exchange and we want that to be um, efficient. So exchange efficiency, that's where, we're, that's where we're looking at that large surface area. So obviously a bigger surface area means there's more places where gas exchange can occur and rich vascularization. So that means we need lots of nice rich blood vessels. So we need a good supply. We need a lot of blood in the area where this gas exchange is occurring. So we can have the movement of these gases uh, going straight into the blood or out of the blood, um, depending on which, uh, which gas we're talking about. And so that that's going to be as efficient as possible. When we talk about gas exchange organs, we uh, need them to be protected. Obviously, they're, they're, it's very important that they aren't physically damaged. And we also need to support them uh, to prevent them from collapsing. And that's one of the problems with whales when they beach themselves, is that the mass of their bodies, uh, which is supported by the buoyancy of water, is not supported uh, by the air on land. And as a result, um, basically that just squeezes all of the air out of their lungs. So the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about the microscopic structures. So the microscopic structures that we want to look at are alveoli. So one alveolus and multiple alveoli. Keep in mind the fact that we need uh, some mucus secretions to keep this moist. We need it to be a thin surface so that exchange can occur. We need a nice large surface area and the alveoli kind of look like grapes, I guess. It's little bunches of grapes in our lungs that massively increase the surface area uh, over which exchange can occur. And just inside of each alveolus is, um, on the other side of that, of course, is a blood capillary. So this is continuous with um, mouth. So this is where the air is going to be inhaled and exhaled um, through a series of other structures which we're not going to talk about in detail now but include things like the bronchioles, the bronchus, uh, the trachea and uh, up into the mouth and the nose. The gases are going to come in and out through um, inhalation and exhalation and then the there's going to be a concentration gradient. So that's the usual thing that we talk about, a concentration gradient and the concentration gradient is going to allow for diffusion. And diffusion is where we get movement of materials from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So the blood that's passing past the alveoli tend to be low in oxygen. So therefore, oxygen is low in the blood and high in the alveolus. And so therefore, diffusion will take it into the blood system. On the other hand, um, the carbon dioxide level will be high in the blood and low in the alveolus, and so therefore it will go in the opposite direction. The blood cells won't move through because they're, they're too big to pass through the walls of the capillaries, but the gases can diffuse through. This is a slide um, 
over here on the right that's kind of showing you a cross section. Remember that a large part of the lung tissue um, are all of these tubes, these interconnected places, spaces for air or gases, uh, more specifically, to be moving into and around. And so it's a big surface area that we have inside of the lungs. And you can see some of the tissue that surrounds some of these um, spaces and also the very, very small uh, alveoli that are obviously much smaller than the bronchioles. Um, and you can see the blood supply around them uh, as well. So, so this is a little bit of an idea at the microscopic level of what's going on in terms of gas exchange in animals. But what about at the macroscopic level? Well, we can't talk entirely about uh, separating the macroscopic from the microscopic because once we start to get a little bit of an idea of what's going on, uh, some of these structures are still very, very small. So the first, so we're going to look at a couple of examples of these. And the first one that we want to look at are the arthropods, or specifically, I guess, the insects. Now, insects have a, a, a little network of respiratory tubes, which are called tracheal tubes, and they service a series of little air sacs. So consider these as a, a number of little mini regions where gas exchange is occurring rather than one central region which was what we looked at um, for the, the mammal example with the alveoli. The gas is exchanged with hemolymph, which is basically a kind of uh, fluid, the blood, if for want of a better word, that circulates around an insect. And spiracles in the abdominal wall open and close to regulate the entry of air into the tracheal tubes. So in a similar sort of way, not the same mechanism, but in a similar sort of way to the way that the guard cells protect the stoma and allow the passage of gases in and out, usually as a result of being turgid or flaccid in relation to the amount of water that's in each of those guard cells. So the spiracles can likewise open and close to facilitate gas exchange for the insect. The tracheal tubes are narrow in diameter and they form very fine tubes called tracheoles. And it's uh, across these that gas exchange occurs. So, so they're kind of separate little segments. You've got a number of these different types of structures that are scattered throughout the uh, organism that are involved in this sort of gas exchange. What about fish? Well, the first thing that I guess to know about fish is because fish are in an aquatic environment, uh, keeping the respiratory surfaces moist is not a problem. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, fish tend to have a system where they can draw water in uh, through the mouth and then push it past the gills. This means that you've got a really nice uh, flow for water that's moving around. Now the problem with water is it has a much lower oxygen concentration. So therefore, this means that we have to think about efficiency. So if there's less of something around, you have to be even more efficient if you want to get hold of that material. So um, this is most easily accomplished with uh, countercurrents and very, very large surface areas. So um, the gill filaments, very, very fine and um, huge surface areas to allow for absolutely as much exchange as is possible for the oxygen that's uh, in the water that's moving across these to come in and of course also for carbon dioxide uh, to come out into the water. So you get this effective uh, exchange that's happening and if you've ever looked at fish gills um, you'll know that there's also a very, very rich blood supply that's associated uh, with the gill filaments so that we've got that a very efficient exchange happening and the circulatory system that's that's ready there waiting to transport those uh, those fresh oxygen molecules to the different parts of the fish um, as it needs them. Gills are structures that we don't just see in fish. There are other types of animals that also use gill systems and they're basically any structure that's involves some sort of outfolding or um, large surface area that facilitates gas exchange. In an equivalent organism, the availability of oxygen in air is so much higher than it is in water that the aquatic organisms need to be particularly efficient in um, gas exchange. Now, the structures that we see in terms of gas exchange for amphibians 
Um, again, a slight variations on what we've seen before, and probably the most important thing to talk about in terms of um, frogs and some toads is their ability to exchange gases directly through the skin. Now, you probably are aware of the fact that frogs and uh, other amphibians tend to be have very moist skin, and of course, um, the, the surface of the respiratory systems need to be moist in order for the gases to be able to um, dissolve in the water and therefore diffuse from one place to another. And so if the amphibian already has a moist skin, then that's a kind of a nice little starting point for that process to occur. So we do see carbon dioxide and oxygen being exchanged between the skin and blood vessels that are sitting just below the outer surface of the skin. So efficient is this particular form of uh, gas exchange that there are certain types of amphibians that can spend a very large amount of time underwater and actually take advantage of the fact that some of the oxygen is in the water. Remember, the concentration of oxygen is much lower in water, but if you've got large surface area and, and lots of folds of skin increases that surface area in something like the Lake Titicaca frog. And so as a result, it's able to spend a lot more time underwater because it's doing the efficient gas exchange thing without having to come out uh, and breathe on a regular basis. Some male hairy frogs sprout dermal papillae on their hindquarters, which again is a way of increasing the surface area. So when you see these sorts of structures, increase in surface area equals increase in efficiency, efficiency of gas exchange. And that's what we've been talking about in this particular series. This tends to happen um, to coincide with the increased respiratory demands of the mating season. It can take uh, a lot of extra energy and so therefore higher rate of respiration, higher requirements for oxygen. So this is one more re uh, respiratory strategy for gas exchange. But what about humans? So we're going to have a look at some of these structures in a little bit more detail. We'll probably look at the dissection of pluck at some point so we can see the relationship between the heart and the lungs and have a look at some of this lung tissue, which is dominated. Uh, it's very, very honeycomb. It's very, very light. And it's because of all of those air spaces that are in there. Now, there's a muscle, the diaphragm, which sort of sits at the bottom of the pleural cavity. And, um, and it creates air pressure differences that contract and relax, drawing air into the lungs and then um, effectively pushing it back out again. The alveoli themselves are kind of look a grape-like. We had a little bit of a talk about these earlier and there's a network of capillaries that run around the alveoli that ensure that there's a very rich blood supply that's able to exchange carbon dioxide for expulsion and at each, each exhalation and also to um, take up the oxygen that's being um, breathed in through inhalation and then diffusing across from the alveoli into the blood capillaries. Gas exchange, as we've talked about, occurs across the walls of the alveoli. And, um, and again, it's the idea of large surface area in particular, the fact that we've got a rich blood supply, they're thin membranes and they're moist, facilitating all those key requirements that we need for respiratory systems. This sideline onto gas exchange, we've looked at plants, now we've looked at animals. Uh, it's just kind of breaking up our look at plant structure and function. And so we will, in the next video, return to uh, having a little bit of a historical look at photosynthesis and trying to finish off our study of plants before we return and have a look at animal systems in a little bit more detail. Thanks for watching.